Morning, patriots, family, and friends. Hopefully, it's working today. We're not having a problem. Everything seems to be good. So, uh, hopefully, you guys will find it. I sent the message out a little bit too late. I apologize for that. But uh, we're here. So, um, I don't know if it's showing up on the other on the other channels on uh, Facebook and uh, and YouTube. Um, I think I found the mistake that I made, so we should be rocking and rolling, I hope. Oh, except for, oh shoot, I forgot to turn off one thing. Oh well. Good morning, Ricky. How you doing? Good morning, Miss Lisa. So, it's good to see you guys. We should have everybody else dropping in here fairly soon. Um, hope you guys are having a good day. What is today? Today is Tuesday. Yeah, it is. April 2nd, year of our Lord, 2024. And, uh, yeah, there was some pretty uh, interesting April Fool's jokes yesterday I was seeing online. It was, uh, I, don't, I don't do that anymore. I used to, but I don't like it. Good morning, Miss Sherry. Not a problem. Family first, Sherry. Family first. You take care of mom. Morning, Mr. Potato. How you doing this morning? Um, but uh, yeah, it, it some of them some of those things used to get out of hand. You know, people don't know when to when to stop. It's always oh, I got to go one better. Good morning, Miss Pamela. I pray you're doing better today, or at least you're doing. You're here with us, so that means you're 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 awake. Good morning, Daniel. It's 10.03 p.m. Wow. Let's see. Uh, Japan was midnight. So if I move backwards from Japan, you've got to be Philippines, Daniel? Maybe? I'm guessing. I'm trying to figure. Yeah. Good morning, Gamba. How you doing? So, looks like the gang is gathering. The horde is gathering. So, uh, yep, yesterday was a good day. We got a, a got a lot of stuff done. Um, got stuff moved and and uh, got a couple of new pantries set up for my wife. Um, that done and and got my. Uh, Membership to the gym set up yesterday for myself, for my son, so we can start working out. We're going to start doing that after we do the Bible study, and we're going to be going over to the gym and uh, and uh, working out and uh, starting to do that. A taste of me, <laughs> a taste of you. Uh, so, anyways, let's um. Let's go before the Lord. Let's take this to God and 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 get this started the right way, because got a whole lot of stuff to think about and to say and to do. Oh, hang, hang on just a second. I forgot to turn the dadgum fan on. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Oh, I've got makeshift ventilation in here. 
I got a heater running behind me, and then the fan circulates it all through the through the shop. Good morning, Miss Annette. How you doing this morning? Um, as I was saying before, I so rudely interrupted myself. Um, let's take it before the Lord, folks. Let's get start this started the right way. You know what? What's even better than that? Let me get this thing off. There we go. All right. Okay, folks, if you would, um, bow your head. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you, Lord God, for your grace and for your love. Each day, Father, that you teach me more, you teach me new things, and you show me, Father God, where uh, I need to learn more and where I am sufficient at this time for your needs. I thank you, Lord God, for this time together, for this Bible study every morning, for the shop, Father God, and, and uh, the things that I'm able to get accomplished. I uh, ask you, Father God, for your blessings, for your grace over all those who are here today, who are going to hear your word, Father God. I just pray that uh, your word would flow out, Father, like water, that those who are listening would hear and partake of it in the fashion that they need father um sometimes two people hear the same thing and they take different meanings from it so i just ask father god that you would bless each person here uh, to their abilities and to their knowledge and their wisdom that your spirit would Fill not only this shop, Father God, but all the spaces where my family, my friends are right now. Wherever they're at, Father God, I pray that you would just pour your blessing out upon that area, that your spirit would be there, that it would protect, it would guard, it would keep them from distraction and from chaos, uh, any disturbances, Father, that would take them away from what it is you want them to hear this morning. I give you all the glory, Father God. I give you all the honor. Because I, I know that without you, Father God, that this wouldn't be possible. That I wouldn't be here and no one knows where I'd be right now without you. So I thank you again, Father God. I give you all the honor and the grace. I give you everything, Father God. I lift it up to you. The prayers, Father God, that uh, I keep getting coming in um, from different members of this family, members from another family that I belong with. Um, there's a lot going on, but there are praises, Father God. I have a friend whose mom's dealing with cancer, and I just thank you, Father God, that uh, after their meeting yesterday, when they were expecting the very, very worst, um, the doctor said that it would be uh, advantageous to pursue a less invasive uh, procedure. And in doing so, Father, that uh, she won't have to have surgery, which is a great load that is lifted off of that family, off of her, Father God, and off of my friend. So I continue to pray over her that her cancer would be eradicated and uh, her life restored. So, thank you, Father God, for this time and for my family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, folks. Uh, 7.30 p.m. Yeah, so you're 12. How can it be 7.30? You're about a half hour off, John. Either you're a half hour off or we're all a half hour off. Because I got seven. I'm Pacific time zone and I'm at 7 o'clock. Good morning, Rita. Okay, let's uh, let's do the flag salute real quick. Uh, there we go. About face. Are my cables loose? Yes, they are. As usual, they, everything is loose. Oh, where are you? There you are. come on. Hold still. Don't be like this. This is what happens when you have to work with inferior products. There it is. Okay, nobody breathe. Okay, uh, if you'd stand where you are able. 
Gentlemen, if you remove your hats, ladies, if you place your hands over your hearts and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. God bless America. And God bless all of you guys. Eyes front. Shut that down. Yep. There's for those of you guys who haven't seen it, that's the shop. It's actually my garage. And uh yeah, I've got a whole bunch of equipment. It's uh it's a work in progress. Ah, there we go. That uh I've been working on for a while and trying to get stuff straightened around and everything. So there it is. Good morning, Miss Cleo. Oh great, I got the sun coming right in off my back. Maybe I can slide you guys over like that, and I can let that sag, and I can turn that. There we go. That'll kind of work. Yeah, except I got that light coming in off of there. Wow. All right. Because I don't think I can... Oh, yeah, I can reach it. Give me another second. Hang on. Uh, thanks to daylight savings time and everything. The... Uh, does that work? Oh, just barely. And then if I stand like right here, we'll be good. Um, yeah, sun keeps the sun's changed its timing, and uh, it's coming up earlier. So I'm going to have to find a way to uh, alter uh, the sun coming in. I haven't done that since high school. Apparently, they don't do it anymore in schools. That's right, Mike. They don't. They uh, they're not. They're doing. I'm getting there by the prayers of God. Excellent, Pamela. Excellent. Hey, Chillin. Hey, Emil. Hey, guys. Um, M M e M I L I M M Emily, I guess. Um, morning, Lisa. You're from India. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, we hit. I was talking to Naomi yesterday or while we were texting back or messaging and uh, we hit a thousand subscribers the other day, folks. That's uh, that's no thanks to me. That's all you guys from spreading the word and talking to your friends and and, uh, you know, new people coming in and, and people that are searching. So uh, it's not that it, it, it. I can't say it doesn't mean anything to me because it, it doesn't from the standpoint of, of finances or anything like that. But it means to me that I'm, I'm in the right place. I'm doing the right thing right now. Uh, they stopped. They stopped teaching cursive writing in school. Yep. My son doesn't even know how, what it is. By the time I was in third grade, we had already mastered. Yeah, exactly. Oz. Exactly. They're not teaching stuff anymore. Um, that's it's kind of funny because that's where this this Bible study actually is the culmination of um, one point one thousand. Well, you know what? God's army is moving forward, and uh, it's great. I mean, it is. It's it's phenomenal. Um, but uh, when when a while back uh, back in twenty two. Um, I was running for office for the school board and I had, uh, we had one of those meet and greets and I had one of the ladies ask me, she said, you know, cause I was, I was doing a, a stream in the morning, just kind of a general chat talk thing. And she asked me, can you do the, the flag salute? And I said, well, yeah, I could. She said, because the kids aren't getting it in the schools. And I was like, Okay, sure. So I started doing the flag salute and, and she reached out to me one morning and said, can you slow down? She says, because my kids don't want to miss it. They're there every single day when you're saying it, but you say it too fast. So I had to learn to pump the brakes and slow it down a little bit. And I asked her, I said, what are they learning about history? And she said, they're not. So I went through the Constitution, and I went through the, the Bill of Rights, and I went through um, 
the uh, uh, Declaration of Independence, and I went through uh, the Mayflower Compact. I started going through the documents that our country was built on and breaking it down. You know, I mean, the Constitution, the amendments, I mean, that was, that was kind of rough for the kids. I had to um, adjust it a little bit to kind of bring it down a little bit so they could understand it. Wow, Naomi. <laughs> that's that's amazing. I I always wish I could I could learn another language, but um my 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 mom is was uh she is pure blood uh Mexican. My my uh grandparents came across the border and uh I was not allowed around my grandfather who as as for those of you who have a have a, a old crusty grandfather, um, I love my grandpa a whole lot, but uh, let's just say that his um, verbal communication they didn't want me to learn due to the fact that um, things you know things that he said were not allowed in in in. Um, in polite society. So, uh, yeah, it was, I was only around, allowed around him when uh, my uncle was around. And, uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's interesting how you, you know, you learn things, but we went through all of that and it just kind of morphed into, I went from that into reading a Bible verse every day and just going through. And then, um, Somebody said, why don't you, you ought to do a Bible study. You know, you're, you've got all the time. And I was like, okay, yeah, that'd be cool. And the next thing I know, I have a, a friend who's offering me an hour on, on his Rumble channel. Um, and uh, next thing I know, we've got a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. So it's awesome. Good morning, Melba Support. Welcome. Um, it's good to see you guys. Sorry. To, what happened, chillin'? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me back up. Here I am running my mouth about me. Good chillin'. You have such a calm demeanor about you, sir. I came from a broken family, and my father was extremely abusive. I would have loved to have had you in my life. I, chillin', I, I don't know what to say, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it's, uh, my, my, I didn't come up, I, I had a really, really good, um, as I was growing up, it was a good family life, um, as long as, as long as I didn't ignite my father, if you will, um, if, if things were good, it was good, um, if if I did something that set him off, then I bared the brunt of his anger, and uh, so I I I don't know. Maybe it was abusive. I don't know. I don't. I didn't consider. I just figured I'd. You know. You know the saying that they've got now. You know, mess around and find out. That's that's kind of what it was. It was. I did a whole lot more of the finding out that I did the messing around. And um, so I, I, I get what you're saying, brother, and I'm sorry for that. But as we grow older, um, we, we learn that our, our true father, our father in heaven, is nothing like that. Um, I was listening to a couple of, of shows before I came on here this morning, um, and it was interesting because the one was talking, I couldn't figure out, you know, people ask me about Jesus, you know, and how does he, how, how you know, what about the salvation and everything? And the, the, the one, there's one guy that, that said, it, he goes, it's kind of like this, he says, have you ever stood in line at a store? And you get up to the counter 
and you're going to buy your stuff and you pull out your wallet and you thought you had more money than you did. Um, and, and you, you go, you look at it and you're like, I, I don't have enough. Have you ever had somebody that was behind you in line that said, Hey, I got it. I'll cover it. No worries. Okay. And, and maybe you're, maybe you're, you're, you're $5 under, or maybe you're, you know, $3 under or whatever. And that person pays that. He said, well, how do I pay you back? How I, I you know, I, I can get you the money. It's, I've got it in the bank. I just, you know, and they said, don't worry about it. Just pay it forward. Right. There's a movie out that's called pay it forward. You should see it. It is be prepared. Okay. I mean, have like a blanket size snot rag. You're going to want this because the movie is, is it's, it's insane. It is, it is. It will tear you up, okay? And it's kind of like that as you, maybe maybe that person that's standing there in line that's trying to buy this stuff, they, they, they can't pay it. And they're just kind of getting their feet under them and they, they start to get a little bit more money. They're working, they're, they're saving, they're scrimping, doing a little bit better each month, a little bit better. And... At the end of the month, you know, they always, somebody always steps in and, you know, that you say, well, yeah, we're going to be short by, you know, one month it's $100 and then the next month it's $70 and the next month it's $50. And as you slowly work through it, as you push forward, you find out that you're getting better. Your, 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 your books are balancing better. And your finances are coming out a little bit better. And pretty soon, you find out at the end of the month, that, hey, I got, I got $5 extra. I've got $10 extra. The next month, I've got $15 extra. Folks, it's like that with God. Because when we start out as brand new Christians, we're running in a deficit. Okay? We don't have to get clean to go take a bath. We don't have to go down to the river and wash ourselves before we go in to take a bath. We do not have to get rid of all of our sin. We don't have to cleanse our spirit and our soul before we accept Christ as our Savior. It doesn't have to, it's not like that. Because I can't do it on my own. There's a lot of stuff that, that I can do. Okay. I got, I'm, I'm half Mexican and I'm half Danish. Okay. The Danish side of me is a very hard nut to crack. I, it just, it's, I have a very, very hard continence. If I put my mind to something, I'll get it done. Okay. When I'm done, it will work. It will. It, it may not be right, but it will work and it will hold up. And um, when somebody says, well, you can't do that or that's not possible, I'll tell them, here, hold my tea and stand back a foot because you're going to be in my way and watch what's about to happen. And I make it happen. Um... But when it comes to God, I can't save myself. I can't be on the cross and on the ground at the same time. I can't save myself from my own sin. We have to take that to the cross. We have to take that to Jesus. We have to go as the broken sinner as the one who knows that they have sinned they know that they have violated the commandments of god the moral law and accept the fact that yeah okay it's like you know stuff that i've done um you know and it's like going to my like going to my dad knowing that i screwed up 
okay, and going and telling him I screwed up, you know, and and uh, I got in an accident with the car, or uh, I forgot to lock my bicycle up, and my bicycle got stolen, and then I had to prepare for the the impact of what was going to come. But the thing that I found, and this is why I think that some people don't want to accept Christ. They don't want to be in the family. They don't want to uh, accept Christ as their Savior. Is because they've lived, you know, like Chillin and like I and, and, and like some of you have lived that life where it's, you just don't want to say anything because you know that when the hammer falls, you're going to be the anvil. Okay? I, I got used to it. I mean, it was... Yeah, okay. And it wasn't all the time, but it was the sudden, explosive impact. And because of that, a lot of people will not turn to Christ. They won't go to God because they're afraid. They say, well, he's a father. Well, I remember what my father was like. I don't want that again. I don't want to go through that again. Folks, our Father in Heaven is nothing like that. Our Father in Heaven is the one that would put His arm around your shoulder and look at the dent in the side of the car and say, well, now we're going to learn how to do body work. Turning it always into a learning experience for ourselves. Well, Dana, now you know that you do not drink and drive, don't you? Yeah, I do. Okay. And that, our Father in Heaven, that is the way that He is. And, and people can't get that. People, Some people just don't. Um, some people don't grasp that. And I understand that. I understand that there's, a, there, there's that level of fear of when I go to God and I say, well, look, you know, uh, you say, you know, don't be drunk with wine or strong drink. Well, it's like what I did, you know. Uh, you know, don't use the name of the don't use use the name of the Lord in vain. Well, eh, that was part of my vocabulary. It was like you know all the time. Um, you know, uh, fornication, um, blasphemy. Uh, you go down the list, right? Um, and I don't want to be judged on that. God isn't going to judge us on that. See, the first thing we have to do, and, and this is something I, I you know, learned going through those 12-step you know, things and all that cool stuff, um, is that we're not being judged on that. What we're doing is we're going to the dentist and saying, I've got a really bad toothache back here. Really bad one. He doesn't judge me because I eat too much candy or I don't brush my teeth. What does he do? He goes in and he fixes it. He says, ah, I see. Yes, you have a cavity in that tooth. Uh, we'll, go ahead, we, we, we'll go ahead and fix it. We'll drill it out and then I'll fill it. That's what God does with us. When we go to God and say, Lord, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't handle it. I cannot. Continue like this. I need you in my life. I need you. I, I just need you. And God says, okay, let's get to work. And that is when we realize that the word Father has a different 
meaning when we talk about God. Okay? Our Father here on earth is just like us. He's human. He's flesh. Uh, our parents, maybe. Um, my, my buddy that, that, you know, whose mom has cancer, they, his family is, was, they went through a lot. I mean, a lot. And he is a strong man of God now because he realized that he had to forgive. He had to, to step away, and he did. The problem was is that when he stepped away, there was nothing for him to step onto. He hadn't been taught. He hadn't been shown. So he fell, and he fell hard. He, he's done time. But it's like I tell people, I said, you know what? I says, when you fall, the best place to fall to is the bottom. Okay? Because when you land on your back, and you're just laying there on the ground looking up, you realize that there is no other way but up. And it gets better. And uh, that's what God wants for us, for each one of us. That's where he wants us to be. He wants us to go. And the best way to do that is, is if we emulate Jesus, if we follow Jesus in what we do, is this you know, there, there used to be back in the 70s, I think it was, the, the saying came out, you know, what would Jesus do? You saw it everywhere. It was WWJD. In fact, I had a bracelet. I had a, I had a, a necklace that had it on it. Okay? And, and it, it was J WWJD. What would Jesus do? We need to ask ourselves in every situation, what would, what would Jesus do here? What, what would he have me do here? Okay? I just came out of a store and the tires of my car have been slashed. Well, I can be angry, I can be mad because I'm late for an appointment and this and that. Or I can say, okay, Father, how would you have me handle the situation and show me the blessing that will come from this? See, when we look at a situation, we only see it from one dimension. We see it from this one place that we're in. God sees the situation from what was, what is, and what's going to be. What was may be that the person that slashed our tires, okay, needs to get themselves corrected. Okay, maybe they need to spend some time behind bars, or maybe they need to go through through rehab or whatever it is. He sees that. Now, they could have picked any car in the parking lot, but oh, they picked Dana's car. Okay. Well, that's okay. God's fine with that because he knows I can handle the situation. Yeah, I'll get a little bit upset, but you know what? Okay. What's next, Lord? You know, call and have the car towed down to the tire shop. Put new tires on the car. And you find out that, you know, that, that when the cops were there, they got fingerprints off the car. Or maybe somebody had a camera and they got a picture of the guy. Now he gets found. Now he gets the help he needs. Right? That person gets the help that they need. See, sometimes, folks, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the other person. It's about the other people that are involved. God's not worried about us. Okay? There's purpose. Like that song said, there's purpose in the pain. There's a reason why it hurts. 
but there's a purpose to it. He knows our armor can take that extra hit. So he puts that burden on us. When you're just starting out with Christ, sometimes your armor is a little bit thinner than everybody else's. Mine, mine was more like rice paper. Okay? Mine was a lot like rice paper, meaning if somebody messed with me or touched my stuff or whatever they did, I would go off. I'd call them everything but right. I, I, oh, I'd dress them down like nobody's business. Okay. Short of, short of getting into a fight. A couple of times I did get into fights. That's not how I want to live my life. Okay. Um, I was watching trailers the other night and there was a movie, um, with Jason Stratham and, uh, it was the, uh, oh, crime. it's the one that he, it's a series, it's a movies that he does with, uh, um, Sylvester Stallone and, um, the one scene is, He's standing on a dock in, in an Asian country. I don't know exactly where it was. And this guy's sitting there sweeping the dock. And he says, excuse me. He says, uh, whose boat is this? Or no, he asks me, is this your boat? And he goes, no. And he says, oh. He says, well, I'm looking for this person. And the guy that's sweeping, he kept his head down. And he says, no, he's, he's not here. He's long gone. Then he goes, oh, well, okay. He says, well, I'm going to go ahead and take this boat. And the guy goes, no, you can't take that boat. And they, you know, the usual thing happens, you know, they, they a scuffle and the, uh, or no, better, yeah, yeah, he goes to hit the guy, uh, Stratham, and he grabs his, his stick and the guy sees his ring and he says, where did you get that ring? And he said, I got it from a friend of mine who's dead. He says, you know Barney. And he says, he's dead. And then the whole persona of the Asian gentleman that's there changes. And he says, I am that person that you're looking for. Okay. He had taken that life and put it behind him. He had put it away. He was not that person anymore because he chose not to walk that life. Until the situation arose where he had to be the warrior that he was meant to be. <laughs> so, um, in that, folks, we each have to live our life the way that God wants us to live, but we have to learn the direction he wants us to go to okay so yeah guys if you're going to be in here there's two things that i require i'm not asking this is a requirement one is that you be respectful you be respectful of yourself and you respect everybody else who is in here okay and the second thing is is that if you do have questions, do me a favor and do not disrupt the, as we're trying to get through the, the lesson, which I'm way off course right now. Thank you, Naomi. Um, and send me, a, send me an email. My email address is at the top. Send me an email. I will find out your answer and I will get it to you. Okay? And I will tell them, wait me, I never knew you. Evil doers. Yep, pretty much. So, um, getting into this, the memory verse for the week is Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Okay. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Now, this is Jesus speaking, and it says, Invitation to come to Jesus. 28, and I quote, Come to me. 
all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay? We take the burden of Jesus upon us. What is the burden of Jesus? Well, what does he say is the greatest commandment? He says, you know, yeah, we've got the Ten Commandments, but what's the greatest one? It is to love our brother as ourselves. That is the greatest commandment. We are to love other people as much as we love ourselves. Okay? So, that's a, that's, that's kind of a silly question, isn't it? Ashraful? It was, uh, it was Matthew that wrote Matthew. Okay. Okay. We'll run down this real quick. God. God who is, who was, and who always will be, the Lord of all, whose name is Yeshua. I beg your pardon, Yahweh. I'm getting ahead of myself. Is Yahweh. You speak his name every time you breathe. When you breathe in, When you take your very first breath, when you were born, when you took that first breath, you spoke the first part of his name. When you pass from this life into the whatever next life you choose, whether it's to go to heaven or not, you will speak his, the last part of his name as you exhale. His son is Yeshua. Jesus. His name is not Jesus Christ. It is Jesus the Christ. Okay? We're laying down a few basic rules here. This is, this is the way it is. There is no but what about, but what about. There, mm -mm. Understand, this is the way it is. This is law. This is, there is no what about. That's kind of like saying, okay, I tell you that water is wet. And you say, oh, but what about? It doesn't change that water is wet. Okay? God is. Jesus is his son. That's why whenever, out of respect, out of honor, whenever I read the, the words, because I have a red-letter Bible, whenever I read the words like that right there, um, 28 to 30 in Matthew 12, or Matthew 11, it's red. That means... These words were spoken by Jesus. Therefore, they will be uttered with respect. That's why I say, I quote, because I will never change a word in the Bible. I will never add to, nor will I subtract from. Okay? It is a God-inspired writing. Men wrote it, yes, inspired by God. 66 books. Over 40 different people, 1,400 years, and four different continents. It is literally that the, the numbers are astronomical of the possibility of the, any of them ever knowing each other or ever writing something that would coincide with what somebody else wrote. And yet it all does. It all links together. Okay? So, with that being said, let's get into this. Um, we're studying this week we're studying the power of meekness and today we're talking about servanthood so the first one first verse is 1 Corinthians 6:20 okay 1 Corinthians 6:20 20. it says for you were bought at a price Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What he's saying is that we were bought. We, 
when we were put on this earth, when, when we were born, we were born into sin. Yes, he is biologically God's son, and he is spiritually God's son. He is God incarnate of a body here on earth. Because that was the way the poor humans could ever figure out and get through their mind that he would be the savior. Because if you had some vapor or something floating around talking to people, we'd end up with prisons all over the world with people who are saying, I heard the voice of Jesus, and everybody would be like, no, you're crazy, so they're going to lock him up. And he knew that man was going to be like that. So he had to put one in our place. He had to put a man in our place that would take our sins and that was able to carry that load. He took the sins of Abraham. He took the sins of Isaac. He took the sins of, of Nixon. He took the sins of, of anybody that you can think of. Okay? Every single person that's ever walked this earth, their foot has ever touched this earth, he has taken their sins. All they have to do is to accept it. All you have to do is accept the fact that Jesus came to save you from your sins, which means you will not end up in the lake of fire for everlasting. You have everlasting life with God in heaven. Um, so, 1 Corinthians 6.20, and that reads, For you were bought at a price. Our soul was purchased by God. Okay. People will say, well, what about choice? I don't have a choice. Yes, you do. You have a choice. Sir, would one not be accepted in heaven if they don't? No. No, you don't have to that, that you don't have to be casting out demons or any of that to be accepted into heaven. What you have to do is you have to accept Christ as your savior. Okay, the Bible says that no one comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus is saying, if you accept me, if you ask me into your heart, things are going to change. Those things that you used to like to do, you're not going to want to do no more. Because you're now living for God. You are living as his servant. You are living to do what it is that he has for you. People say, well, I don't want to be anybody's servant. I don't want to do that. Well, that's your choice. But I can tell you this, I would much rather serve a God who I know will protect me, that will take care of me. He takes, he's taking care of my family. Okay? I've seen things that he's done. And I would much rather do that than to try and do this on my own and figure out when I get to the end of the run that I was wrong. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like heat. I don't do well in heat. I do a whole lot better when it's cold. He came for the lost. Yes, you're right. Not just the lost of Israel. He came for the lost sheep, is what he said. So, the next part. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. We're supposed to glorify God in our bodies, in our spirits. We're not supposed to go out and do these sins and everything. That's not what we're made for. Now, does he expect me on... on Sunday morning before I go to church to be a sinner, walk in, get saved, walk out, and I don't ever do that stuff again? No. It's a learning curve. It was like that example I was telling you about with the money. That when you show up and you don't have the money that you need to pay for something, well, he pays it for you. And then the next time you have a little bit more, but you're still a little bit short, he can pay for you. Okay? Jesus is that extra payment. He is the one that 
while you are getting rid of the sin in your life and you are correcting your life and you are moving forward with your walk with God, he's the one that's always there saying, he, he's good, Dad. He's good. He's with me. I've got him covered. Okay, or I've got her covered. And as we move through life and, and as, as things happen and we start to realize, oh, you know what? I don't want to do that because that's sin. That goes against the moral law of the Bible. I don't want to do that. Therefore, I'm not doing that. He is trying so hard to disprove God. Oh, well. That's kind of like an uphill battle on a slope full of sli slimy mud because it ain't going to happen. You can't disprove God. That is, that is, it is impossible. Okay. I mean, every single day, science is actually proving that Jesus did exist. God does exist. The things in the Bible, they found a, I was listening to a program the other day that they were talking about. Um, they started trying to figure out about the mountain where Moses met God, and they're looking at it, and then they're looking about where the Israelites had crossed the the um, where the where the ocean had been opened up, right? And they're saying, well, there's only one place out of this whole thing. The guy got a topographical map. They had mapped the bottom of the of the the river, if you will, um, and they had figured out there's only one place where this where they could have crossed and then when they started mapping it out they figured they found out that that was where they crossed so they got a dive team and they went out and they dove the river and all scattered through there were were coral reefs in the shape of wagon wheels and there were coral reefs in the shape of of the the um chariots and there were skeletons of men and skeletons of horses all scattered down through this thing. And it's not like they just drove off the edge and right into the water and they died right there. No, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of yards off of the shore. Okay. And these are things that have been there for millennium. So slowly, slowly, this is all. See, man is finally realizing instead of fighting it, they're finally looking and they're saying, yeah, this is real. Yeah, this is a, uh, that's interesting. It's real. Okay. So, um, the last part of this says, which are God's. The, our body and our spirit belong to God. Okay. Um, then it, it asks, it says, explain what this means to your life. Like I said, I'm willing to be a servant to God. I will serve no other. Okay? Yes, I was in the service. I did serve my country. But I did that for a different reason. That was because I was called to do that. That was something that I did. Okay? I did my time, and I'm out. And um, it's it's something I believe that... that now, we won't get into that. Anyways, we were bought with a price, and we're supposed to glorify God in all that we do. Think about anything that you do, anything. Exactly. Thank you, Naomi. Yeah, we do need to keep. Folks, that's the other thing. Is we need to keep each other in prayer. Okay? If, if there's somebody in your area that you happen to see, you know, like there, there's a guy in the, uh, the Bible study that I do before this one um, that I'm part of, my friend does. There's a guy, he lives just about 40 miles up the road from me. Okay? If you find out that there's somebody that lives in your country, you see that, you know, and you don't have to contact him, you just pray for him. Because if you're living in the same country, you're living under the same uh, rules and everything, so you understand what they're going through. Uh, here in the United States, we got we got states, so Maybe somebody lives in your state, like the, the guy that lives up the road from me. Okay, he lives here in my state. There's another one that lives down in San Diego. I can pray for them. We need to be praying for each other. 
because we're all going through things that none of us ever know about. Naomi's going through stuff I don't know about. I'm going through stuff that Trip doesn't know about. Trip's going through stuff Lisa doesn't know about. Doesn't mean you can't pray for them. You just pray God's blessing on them, His healing. Maybe, maybe I there's something coming up I need to know about. Maybe there's something that I need to understand. I, I don't even know it. But you guys pray about it. Somebody else prays about it. And then when it happens, it's like water through a sieve. It doesn't even slow down. It just goes right on through. Everything works out perfectly. Okay? We need to pray for that for each other. It doesn't have, you don't have to know exactly, you know. Um, actually, I, I, I do. I plan on being in my shop going about my business that, that needs to be taken care of because um, it's a natural phenomenon. Eclipses are. And so um, my biggest concern is that people will not be smart when it comes through and they try to look at it with their eyes. And now we're going to end up with more people who will be blind because they didn't heed precautions properly. Um, you pray for the trolls. and you look at, Yes, absolutely, Naomi. We need to pray for them too. Because see, a lot of them are searching, folks. A lot of them don't even know who God is or, or, or what God is. They may be... They maybe were taught that there is no God when they were raised, or maybe, maybe they were taught, you know, that that, you know, he's just a myth, something that that doesn't exist that people pray to. Okay. The truth will set them free. At some point, they will know the truth. So we need to pray that that comes to them, whether it's through us here, or maybe it's somebody that they work with, or or. Maybe it's somebody they hang out with, right? That that truth will flow to them. Because I promise you, I promise you, the first time they take a drink, the first time that they, they start to drink of that pure water from God, and, and they start to see things happen, their eyes get open. At that point, they will start to want more. And whether it's here or it's somewhere else, good morning, lady. Um, good morning. Is it G Guido? Guido? Guido. I don't know. I'm, folks, I'm sorry with the names. It's, it's so much easier if it's like, oh, it's Steve and it's Susan and it's Debbie and it's Donna and it's George and everybody's got names. <laughs> it's like, it's hard. Um, but once they start to get that, they may be back here in a week, in a month, in two months. We may see him come back here. Do not greet him with anger. Do not greet him with that, oh, he's back. No. You greet him with the joy that Jesus gives us. Welcome. Come on. We were wondering where you were. If he starts acting up again, you leave that to my moderators. Okay? Don't worry about it. Just pray for him. My, my moderators are very, very patient up to a point. Okay? This is something they've had to teach me, is to be patient up to a point and then escort them to the door. Okay? Because it's it's... We found a couple of times, Naomi's even mentioned it to me, where somebody comes in and they create a ruckus, and all of a sudden they start quieting down, and then they start asking questions. I mean, real good questions. It's like they're learning. And then all of a sudden they come back the next day, and then they come back the next day. Folks, they're just looking for a safe space. They're looking for somewhere where, are you guys real? Is this God real? You know. Um, I, they're looking, they're searching. Let's be that signpost for them. Saying, yeah, you can come here. It's safe here. 
You can ask your questions as long as you're respectful. And then we go on. So, um, the next one, Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. So we're going back to the front of the Bible, the Old Testament. Oh, is that? Is that? No, that's good. Okay. Um, Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. And that reads, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need of all things. And he, meaning God, will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. Okay. Is your knowledge of salvation not enough for you? The Mormons say there's limited space in heaven. So maybe don't spread the word too far. Well, I haven't read that there's any boundaries on heaven. You know, they may believe that, but, you know, they believe right now that the world's getting overpopulated and, and we need to start eliminating people so that the people that are here can still live. We need to get rid of people. So. I don't believe that there's a boundary on heaven. I mean, if, if Jesus can take my sins and throw them as far as east is from west, understand that. He's talking in a linear line, a straight line. If he can throw them as far as east is from west, now if I get on that line and I head east, I'll never find the end of it. Or if I come back and I go the other direction, headed west, I'll never find the end of it. Therefore, if he throws it as far as east is from west, that tells me that the boundaries of heaven are not. There are no boundaries of heaven. It's not like, um, it's not like a concert hall where you only have so many seats. They ain't selling so many tickets. Okay? There's going to be more than enough room for everybody. That's one of my things that I, the, one of the things that the Mormon religion that I, I don't, I don't like. Okay. It, putting restrictions on it like that. Oh, there's only 144,000. No. If that's true, then, then they shut up heaven probably, mm, I don't know, 100 years ago. I'm just saying. So, you know, there there isn't, there is no, there's there's no um, occupancy limit. Okay, guys. So, um, Deuteronomy twenty eight forty seven forty eight. What he's saying is, because we didn't serve the Lord, your God, with joy and gladness. And he's speaking, this is old school. This is, he's talking about, um, um, hang on. Let me get back here. It is, I want to make sure I got this right. I know I looked it up, and I want to make sure I got it. Um, Okay, this is Moses, who is addressing the new generation of Israel, the new ones. Um, because they've been out wandering, you know, they've been wandering in the desert for 40 years. They're about to go into the... Um... <laughs> no, Henry, I'm, a, I'm far from that, my brother. I don't know everything. I know a lot. I know, I know a little about a whole lot of things. Um, I'm learning, though. Every day I learn more about the Bible. I'm learning more about what's in here. Um, but this is Moses. He's speaking to the Israelites. This is where they're standing on the one side of the river, and they're about to enter the promised land. They can see it from where they are. He can't go there. His brother Aaron ain't going there neither. 
Because they, they, they both screwed up. So he's telling these people. Now, this part, he's saying that because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. In other words, these people did not serve. You know how the Israelites were, how things were going on with them. They, you know, Moses goes out for vacation. Actually, he goes up to meet with God. He goes to have a conference. And people start pushing Aaron, saying, look, man, we want us up. He ain't coming back. I don't know what's going on with your brother, but he ain't coming back. Look at the lightning up. Look at the storm up there. He's not coming back here. So y'all best get busy and make us a Make us a, a golden idol that we can worship. And Adam, Aaron's like, no, nah, just wait, just wait. And they're like, no, we, we done waiting. We got all this gold that the Egyptians gave us. So we're going to bring it to you, and you're going to cast us a golden calf, and we're going to worship that. And just about the time they get it done, and Aaron's all done with it, that poor boy got roped into that. and he come, Here come Moses down off the mountain. Now, understand, he's carrying the Ten Commandments written by God's own hand. These are like very, very, very rare. These are, you know, you don't mess with these things, right? And what does he do? He gets so, he, he pulls a Dana, he gets so pissed off, he takes them and throws them down on the ground and breaks them. Now, granted, he wouldn't use the Lord's name in vain, okay, like I probably would have. But he got really bent out of shape. He's, he took the Ten Commandments and destroyed them. And he probably took Aaron to task. Because then he takes the golden calf and he grinds it up and he puts it into the water and he makes them drink it. And he says, now where's your God? Here you are down here down here worshiping this calf. You just drank the gold that was in the calf. Was that after he told the people to then? Uh, I'm not sure, Mike. The que I, I, maybe I didn't catch the first part of the question. I only have like four lines that I can read here at a time. Five, maybe. Uh... Uh, no, okay, I missed the first part of it, Mike. Um, so Moses is telling them, you didn't serve your God with joy and gladness in your heart. This, this is all he wanted. You just needed to serve it. He provided the food for you. He gave you manna. That's, that's, that's the food from heaven. Okay? Yeah, I've read descriptions about it. What it, what it, probably tasted like it's like honey and and just all this goodness and and it was kind of like um being a sailor we know about about pemberton and about um hardtack okay hardtack was a um a food that, that used to be carried on the ships that um wouldn't spoil okay it, it, it wouldn't rot or anything because it was baked it was like triple baked it was really hard and the best way to eat it was to take it and you dip it into coffee or you dip it into um, water, you know, whatever you had to make it a little bit softer to be able to eat it. So they were given manna from heaven. And then they complained about that. So then he said, okay. And they had, uh, what was it, doves? Or pigeons? Birds. I forget what the, which ones. But they, 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 they had the birds to eat. Okay? And then they got greedy. He said, only take what you need for that day for your family. Only take what you need for that day. Because I will supply you the next day. Um, yeah, it was, it's Deuteronomy 28, 47 through 48. It says, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart 
for the abundance of all things. So you're, you're, you're glad for the abundance of everything. He's saying that you're, when you're serving him, you do it with joy and gladness because you can have the abundance of everything that you need. Moses goes on and he says, Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need. In other words, all that abundance that you had, I'm lifting my hand off of you. I'm taking all that abundance away from you. And in need of all things, and he, God, will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. If we don't, if, if, see, God's saying that, that as long as you serve me, as long as we have this agreement, I will take care of every need that you have, everything. God knows before we ever ask. I could ask right now for healing for Pamela, but before I ever do that, God already knows what I'm going to ask. He's just waiting for me to ask. It's like, it's like you coming home from a trip, maybe, and you have a toy for one of your children. Hopefully, if you have more children, you, hopefully you have more than one toy. You don't want to have a start a fight. But you come home, and they know that every time you come home, you bring them a toy, right? Maybe it's something just small, you know, a little plush toy or whatever. And you're always doing that for them. And then there's a time that comes as they grow older when we have to break the harsh reality to them that you're not going to live off the fat of the calf anymore. It is time for you to stand on your own two feet, to work, to enjoy the prosperities of your own efforts. This is one of the things that gets me about the current generation. They want, they, they see things and, and, you know, oh, look at this person or that person. They're not working all that hard, but they've got all this money. That's what I want to do. I, want to, I just want to start out not working hard. What they don't see is all the time and the effort and the years that the people have put in to do whatever they're doing to get to that point. It's like a duck. If you guys ever look at a duck on a pond when they're swimming, the duck just kind of glides across the water. It's like, yeah, here I go. You know, I'm just gliding along the water. But when you look underneath, their legs are doing about 200 miles an hour. Okay, they're just sitting there paddling away. Just do, 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 do. But up on top, they're just sitting there. They're just like looking around. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, here I go. Nowadays, the gener younger generation does not want to put in the sweat equity to earn the prosperous at the other end. Okay. Um, he's saying that he's going to take away all of the all of the abundance of things that he had given us because we didn't serve him. In fact, he's going to bring enemies against us that will take us down. Okay, or them, not us, them. Okay, the next one is Psalm one sixteen. 16. Psalm 116, 16. Um, just in case, if you guys want to get ahead on a lot of this, Naomi will, uh, I, I get her the verses, um, last night was kind of late, and I apologize for that, Naomi, but I get her the verses um, as early as I can. In fact, she already has the ones for Wednesday right now. So when we get done here, Sometime later this morning, she'll be posting them up on the on the uh, Discord. We have a page over on Discord, and she will post the the verses up over there, so that way you guys can go through and you can read them. Maybe even mark them in your Bible, you know, just like little papers, so you can go. This is where he's reading right here, okay? And um, that way you can read along. 
Okay, unless you're driving, please don't read while you're driving. That's how accidents happen. Um, but we try, we'll put them out that way so that you guys have a chance to be able to read them before we actually do the study. If you that God is speaking to you and you know you are lost, some don't know the prayer to accept Jesus. You know, Ricky, you're right. Um, and, but there isn't really any one prayer. Um, there are certain criteria that need to be expressed in the prayer, yes. Um, thank you, Naomi. I, I didn't mean that as a, I didn't know that you did or didn't. Um, but for those who are searching, those who are wondering, um, if you break it down just to the, to the real basics of it, the idea, the concept is going before Jesus. You, you, you pray to Jesus and you, you tell him, look, I know I'm a sinner. I've sinned. Okay. And I know that I'm not worthy of, of, of being in heaven. I'm not worthy of the love of God. But I'm done with all that. I give that all over to you. I'm, I'm finished. I'm done doing it my way because it's obvious it's not getting me where I need to be. It's not going to get me where God wants me. So, I want you, Jesus, to come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Be my Savior. I will follow you. I will live my life to a better extent. I will do everything I can. I know that I will never be perfect, but with your help, I will be a whole lot better than where I am. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and I ask you into my life right now. I give my life over to you. Okay, what you're doing is you are you are submitting to Jesus. You are saying, I acknowledge your sovereignty as Lord. And I ask you, please, to take my sins from me, to forgive me for my sins and to help me to live a better life for God. That I would be worthy of of your salvation okay there's a lot of them uh, you you'll see um in fact i'll find i i know i've got them here at the house somewhere um i used to hand out tracks all the time my wife and i used to and i'm sure that we probably still have a couple but on there it actually has the the what they call the sinner's prayer and it changes a little bit um it changes a little bit depending upon who prints up the things or whatever, but it's basically accepting Christ and acknowledging your sins, acknowledging that you are a sinner. Okay. I had to change how I said that. I used to say that I am a sinner. No, I'm not. I was a sinner that was saved by the grace of Jesus. I was saved by the blood of Christ. Okay. Um, and then the other half of that is living your life worthy of being there, being with Jesus, being with God in heaven, living a life helping other people, loving other people more than yourself, putting others before you, um, a life of service. Now, I don't mean, you know, you got to go down to, you know, to, to the deepest, darkest reaches of some jungle somewhere to try and go and, and evangelize some Indian tribe down there that's never seen a white man. No, you can do that in your hometown. You can go downtown where homeless people are and, and maybe go to a homeless shelter and help them. Um, go to, go to some place like on Thanksgiving, you know, they, they do the big dinners and everything for the homeless people. Go and volunteer. All right, Rebecca. Uh-oh. 
Yeah, go get yourself ready for that. Take care of yourself. We'll see you tomorrow, I hope. Hopefully the storm will pass over by then. Pass over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, squirrel. <laughs> um, but yeah, living a life that is worthy of the sacrifice of Jesus. Um, hey, yeah, folks, let's keep Rebecca in our prayers. Um. Amen, Henry. That is see, that's good. That's you know, you're sharing the word of Jesus. Okay. Um Jesus talked about that. It, you gotta um Amen. God spoke to me when I was in church as a kid. Oh nuts. See, that's my prize. But I didn't know the words to say. Um it yeah, it is. It's it's not words. It's more heart. You're speaking from your heart to God. Now, God already knows. But we, you and I, have to put it out there. Okay? Understand that, that our citizenship isn't here. As a Christian, our citizenship is in heaven. We're just on a layover, if you will, here on earth. We are here to help those around us. Remember I was talking about the movie, You'll Pay It Forward. That's what we need to do, because if you accept Christ, and Christ forgives you of your sin, and you start to realize that, why didn't I do this when I was younger? Why didn't, you know, I, I've heard a lot of older people say, I should have done this when I was younger. All that sin, everything's off of me. I don't have that burden anymore. He has taken the weight off of me. I feel so freed up. We need to pass that on to somebody else. We have that responsibility to pay that forward to the next person. Okay? It's like passing the baton. And don't be dejected. Don't be upset when you talk to somebody and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And the next time you see them, you're like, hey, how's it going? Oh, I, uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, no problem. No. A lot of times, our preparing the ground by speaking with somebody, by giving them the information, we're preparing their heart. We're, we're starting to crack that shell. Maybe they've got a hardened heart. Maybe they've been, you know, the, like some in here. Maybe they've been abused really bad. Maybe it's a young lady who has been abused in the wrong fashions. She's been treated the way a lady is not treated. Okay? And I'm not going to get too deep into that, but things happen. Or things have happened, I beg your pardon. Okay? And they don't feel like they're worthy. They don't feel like, um, I, I'm not, I, I can't, you know? I need to stay a ways off. I have to stay away from because I'm not, I'm unclean, I'm not worthy. No. Jesus doesn't care about religion peels everything about a woke up mind. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, but he doesn't care. He doesn't say, you know what, stay away from me. Go Go get rid of your sins, stop sinning, clean your life up, and then come back to me. No, 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 no. He says, come here. Come here. I see all that sin dripping off of you. I see that. Dana, you got so much sin. You're leaving a trail in my house, boy. I can see all that. Just get over here. 
And then he puts his arm around us and he loves on us. And then pretty soon, that sin just starts melting away. It's, it's not there anymore. We don't want to do these things. Maybe we need help, so we find help. We go and find somebody who can help us with drinking or sex or pornography or drugs or, or whatever it is, right? We get the help that we need, and God works us, moves us forward to that slowly, okay? I dreamt about that person riding on a horse coming towards our earth. Yeah, uh, that would be, um, at that time, depending upon the color of the horse, that could be um, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, or that could be um, uh, Christ coming. Exactly, exactly, Henry. Yes, you run to the Father, you run to safety, no matter how messed up you are. No much, no much, how much uh, sin you're carrying, no much, you know, how much garbage you've got on you. Okay, he doesn't care. It was a white horse. That would be that would be Jesus. He was coming as the warrior. Um, all right, the next one, Matthew twenty, twenty five through twenty eight. Matthew. Where'd he go? There it is. 20, 25 through 28. All right. Now this is be Jesus speaking. The um, This is under the heading um, Instruction about Ambition. This is the very end of it. And it reads, But Jesus called them to himself and said, I quote, you now, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Uh, yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus came to give his life as a ransom for us. He came to rescue us. Okay? Thank you. I have a friend that makes these. Um, you know, we see all these movies, you know, on TV and in the theater and everything about the, the guys that go in to rescue people, right? That's like what Jesus did. He came to rescue. The thing was, is he was the, he was the, he was not what they figured. He was not that warrior. He was not that, that brutal, muscular, muscle bound. No, he came as a sheep. He came as the offering to save us. Okay, he came to pay the price for our sins. Because like it says in the Bible, the wages of sin are death. The wages of sin are death. If I sin, I will be paid in death, and not just death of my body, not just death there, but eternal death. Okay? So, Jesus came as the Lamb. That's why, that's why it, it, it messed with John the Baptist, it messed with his head really bad. Because he's expecting, he was expecting, you know, like the one guy, he said, they, they saw uh, riding a white horse. He saw this warrior coming. Well, he wasn't looking to what was happening now. His dream was 
what was to come at the other end of time. Jesus will come back again as the warrior. He's not coming back as the lamb. The sacrifice is over. The offering is set upon the table. We have the choice to choose. It's like a banquet, folks. You have the opportunity to choose salvation in Christ forever and ever, or not. But upon your choice, when you do pass from this earth, you will be judged by what's on your plate. Did you choose the course of salvation? Did you choose Jesus as your Savior? Did you choose the Lamb? Or did you go a different direction? Because like it says, that no one comes unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus speaking. He's the Lamb. No one comes unto the Father but by the Lamb. The blood the Lamb shed for us is the only way that we can get there. I can't do anything. There's nothing. I, I could have... I could have a hundred thousand times the money of Elon Musk and George Soros and Donald Trump all put together. I could have a hundred thousand times more than that and give it all away. Doesn't mean a thing. I could be poorer than, than anybody. And if I have not accepted Christ, it doesn't mean anything. And they apparently sacrifice the red heifer. That scares me. There's folks, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of signs. There's gonna be a lot of things happen. Why? See, evil is not stupid. Okay. Evil understands. The evil knows God. Evil knows the Bible. Understand this. That means they can look in there and they can say, well, you know what? Look at what we've done so far. We've gotten this earth in such a bad situation. And these people are all looking. Right? They're all looking. They're looking for something. Oh, look. It says that in the end times there will, they, there will be a red heifer that sacrificed. You know what? Oh, we know somebody. We got a guy. Why don't we get a red heifer, get it sacrificed? Is that the sacrifice that comes from God? No, no. We will know the time. Okay? The thing is, is I urge each and every one of you, don't, wait make sure that your heart is right with god and then do that which god has put upon every single one of us you talk to people every day i talk to people all the time it gets to the point where some people just want me to shut up okay but when we talk to other people if you Tell them, if they say, hey, where's a good place to get pancakes in town? Oh, well, there's this place over here or that place over there. That place over there is better, a little bit more pricey, but they got a lot better pancakes. You're going to tell them, right? Well, where's the best place to get my tires changed? Oh, there's a shop. Don't go to this shop over here. God will rip you off. Go to that one down there. He's really fair. We're always telling them where the good places are, right? Don't, don't you think that we need to tell them about life insurance, fire insurance. I'm not talking about this structure here, no. I'm talking about forever life insurance. Um, I'm talking about forever life insurance and fire insurance. Of being with God. Okay. If you love somebody. If you really love somebody. 
I know that you love their body. You don't want them to leave. You don't want them to leave us. But what about their soul? What about their spirit? Where are they with God? My buddy that his mom has cancer, they had that talk a while back. One of the other people that was in the Bible study this morning, they said that they had that talk with their with their family this weekend over Easter. When my father was was <laughs> besides my dad being really, really ornery, um, he we thought he was on his way out, and my sister had that talk with him. And He had accepted Christ. Okay. My father was a very, not closed off man, but didn't share a lot. Something like this, he couldn't do this. He could talk to you about electronics. He could talk to you about engineering. He could talk to you about anything else. Talking with people like this, he couldn't do. Probably why he didn't tell us until she pumped him and got the information. Because I, 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 I said, I've got to know. I said, I have to know. Does he know Jesus? And she answered me back almost immediately. She says, yeah, we had that talk about a week ago. She says, and then I had it again when he was, when he was a little bit more lucid, when he wasn't on the drugs as much. She says, he knows who Jesus is. Yes, he has made his peace with Jesus. He has accepted Christ as his Savior. I know where my dad is now. But that's something that's one that we're called to do, folks. That's what you and I are called to do. That's what part of our mission is. Part of our mission is to take care of the families around us, take care of our family, make sure that things are right. And at the same time, we need to make absolutely sure that their life is right with God also. So, uh, moving on. That was Matthew 20. The next one is Luke 16, 13. And then we got one more after this and we're done. Luke 16, 13. Now again, this is Jesus speaking. Uh, 13 would be here. Okay, so this is the very last verse um, in the section under parable of the unjust servant. So 13 says, and I quote, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay? You can't serve God and the evil. You cannot do it. You cannot live an evil life and serve God. Exactly, Naomi. It, it, it takes... Yes, forever life insurance and fire insurance. Don't forget the fire insurance, Henry. It's forever fire insurance, too. Um, yeah, my dad was 90. He was 93 when he died. He was like two weeks short of his 94th birthday um, last year. He would have been 94 this year in August. And. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, it took his generation a long time to get to that point. Um, everything that they went through, my dad, my dad was in Korea and, and uh, my father-in-law was, was, he got in, he went into the Marines in the end of uh, World War II. And then he was in during um, Vietnam. Um, he spent 20, <sighs> 28 years, I think. I think that was it, 20-something 20, 20 years in. Okay. Thief on the cross at his last moment on earth finding salvation. Exactly, Cleo. Exactly. See, the thing is, Cleo, that thief... 
was alive up until he was put onto that cross and still he was alive enough to acknowledge who Christ was or Jesus was. Some people, even some of the people here, in the next 24 hours, if all of us started taking notes and started looking at things, one of us is going to know somebody who passes because of an accident. Okay? Because of an accident. Whether it's somebody running a red light, running a stop sign, doing something stupid, okay? Somebody's going to pass. One of us will know. And the thing is, none of us know when that is. I can't pick up my phone and I can't call Cleo and say, Cleo, don't go anywhere because this is, you're going to be at this stop sign at this intersection and somebody's going to run the light and hit you. You know, I, I can't call Jaden and I can't tell Jaden, hey, don't, don't go there because there's going to be this accident and you're going to be in the middle of it. We don't know and that's why it is imperative that we make sure, especially with the way things are going right now, if you look at Chicago, Los Angeles, um, Oregon, uh, New York, there's so many things going on, folks. Bad. Um, that it's, it's, you know, I know, I know people who are, they, they have yearly, they go, you know, to New York to go, you know, for whatever they go to, to Broadway and do, they do whatever they're going to do. Um, they're canceling. They've been doing it for years. They're canceling it. They're canceling their trip. You know, the hotels are like, they're, the hotels are saying, well, we're, we're losing people left, right, and center because people don't want to come here because of the way that people are acting. So you never know from one second to the next. Okay? That's why I urge people. It, it's like, it's like emergency procedures on an airplane. When the air masks drop, the first thing you do is you put yours on first. Then you put the other person's on. Because if you're trying to put their mask on them, like on a baby or whatever it is, and you pass out, and you can't get that mask on that baby, now it's too dead. If you get your mask on, you got a better chance of saving that other person, saving that baby, maybe, or, you know, Maybe it's a, 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 an adult parent or whatever. So you've got to save yourself first. You've got to make sure that you're rock solid with Jesus. You've got your fire insurance. You've got your life insurance. Everything's bundled. It's all done. You know, it's kind of like progressive, except it's even better. Okay? You don't have to worry about bundling everything because God bundles it all together. It's, one, it's a one-shot deal. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Mutual Life. I had to get that on a sweatshirt. Jesus Christ Mutual Life. And then on the back you put, are your premiums paid up? That'd be cool. That'd be a good sweatshirt. That'd be a good sweatshirt. Um, so, um, but like he says in 13, that you can't serve two masters. I can't serve two things and one of this is one of the things that i've had to deal with in the last couple of years is i've actually had to learn to say no we can it's okay to say no if if you've got stuff going on and and somebody else they want to you know something else um then you have to choose which one is the better Okay, you have to choose for your life which one is better. I got my, it's like I said when we first started out today, I got my memberships paid up at the, at the gym for my son and I yesterday. And it's my endeavor to, to leave here. As soon as I'm done here, um, I'm going to go get suited up and I'm going over to the gym and I'm going to spend about an hour or so on the treadmills because I'm going to start working out again because I know that my health is, is 
Exactly. I'm the same way, Natisha. I, I hate to say no. Because what runs through my, and this is, yes, okay, that's a possibility. Um, what runs through my mind is that, oh, but Dana, you have to say yes, because nobody else may say yes. That is a lie. You may not be prepared. You may not have the time. You may not be able to. Because what happens is, is if you take one more thing on, your plate is just going to spill all over the place. We used to, my wife and I used to joke about it. She said, she says, you can't say yes. She says, you've got too much on your plate already. I said, well, that's okay, honey. I'll just go out and get me a hubcap. I don't need a plate. I'll just get a hubcap off of a car. They're a whole lot bigger than a plate. Maybe I'll get a serving platter. And I realize now I was actually doing a disservice to a lot of these people saying yes. I should be saying no a whole lot more. Saying yes to Jesus, no to the extracurricular stuff. Exactly, Cleo. Exactly. We, my wife and I, um, I told you guys, you guys known this for, well, I don't know, 21 weeks, 20 weeks. It was divided by four. That's five, about five months ago, I was telling you, when we started this, we shut our TV off. The company we had our, our, our cable through um, switched over to streaming only. And I'm, I just, yeah, I said, you know what? I said, we've been talking about this and I've been doing my Bible study out here in the shop every night and I don't have time to watch TV. I said, why don't we just shut it off? And at first it was kind of hard. It was like, Ooh, Oh, what about what? Oh, mm. you know, but now it's like, I might as well just sell my TV because it's, it's, we never watch it. I'm out here doing my Bible studies, you know, and working on my projects, and, and my wife's doing her Bible study. You know, she's going for her bachelor's degree in, in uh, um, I don't know what you call it. It's, it's uh, by, by Bible study, but, you know, the, the ministry, something like that. I don't know. Um, but she's doing that, so she's going to class. So, you know, I'm at one end of the house. She's at the other end of the house. And uh, so, yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe we just ought to just sell the TV. I mean, uh, we don't even have the time to sit down and watch movies. I mean, I got a whole huge collection of CDs that they can probably sell those too. Um, but yeah, we have to choose who we're going to be loyal to. Are we going to be loyal to God or are we going to be loyal to some something else? Where do we put our time? I tell people, I can tell you exactly where your heart is. If you do three things, you show me your checkbook register or your bank statement, okay? You show me your calendar, and then you let me walk through your house. And when I walk out your front door, I can tell you exactly where your heart is, okay? Because where we spend our money and where we spend our time is a direct indicator of of where our heart is. If our heart's with God, that means you might, you would see, <clears throat> excuse me, more money going toward charities, uh, going toward the church for your tithing and everything. If your heart's for God, your time would be either like studying your, your Bible studies or everything, or, or going out and helping people. Maybe you do meals on wheels. You drive around and deliver meals to people. You know, you, you go and visit the shut-ins, the, the elderly who can't get out of their house. Okay. Go and help them. Maybe they just need to have a curtain rod put up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe they need to have a, a washer changed in the sink because the sink's leaking. I understand the older generation because... <clears throat> Excuse me. Hang on a second. Because I used to go with my dad. My dad used to do that. Okay. My dad used to go... 
and and he was part of the Masons, and he was part of the um, I forget what the other group was, um, but there's a couple of different groups, and they would somebody would say, well, you know, hey, so and so's, you know, they're, they they got to get their sink fixed because they're they're um, they're losing all the money with the with the water running all the time, they're dripping. I said, oh, I, I can do that. I'll go over there and do that. So I go with him. I, that's how I learned to serve. I, you know, well, why are you doing this? He says, well, it needs to be done. He says, they ain't got the money to go pay a plumber. He says, that's what I did with my dad. He says, I, I, I learned about plumbing with my, with my grandpa, his dad. He says, my dad built houses. He says, I learned how to plumb. He says, I learned about those wash. I, why? I don't need no money. I just go over you and do it for him. And that's kind of the way, you know, when people ask me to do things for them and, and I go out and I help them, you know, uh, I had a friend, they, they, they had a tree in their front yard and, uh, and, and it rained pretty hard and it was starting to fall. And they said, well, you know, it's going to fall right across the shed, you know? And, and, and I said, I can take it down, not a problem. And I showed up and I got my chainsaws and I had my son. And I had to move one of their cars out of the way. And it was falling one direction toward a shed. And I didn't want to cut it and let it go that way because it hit the shed. So we tied it up to the truck. And he says, are you sure about this? I said, yeah. I said, where do you want it? And he said, I want to have it lay right there. I said, okay. So I walked out and I put a rock on the ground. I was being a bit arrogant. And I had my son tie the truck up so that the tree could only fall in a certain arc. And I cut it. And sure enough, it fell right where I had played this little rock, right on the ground. And he goes, how'd you know it was going to fall right there? I said, I didn't. I said, that was just where I felt it was going to end up. I said, it wasn't going to hit that shed. I don't care what that tree was going to do. It was not going to hit your shed, but it was going to fall where we wanted it. You know, we ended up bucking the tree and then we cut it all up for him and and the next year, he was splitting it and using it for firewood. We can all go out and, and do things like that. That's the service part of who we are. And uh, if we serve God, if we serve him the way Jesus saved us, with complete and total abandon for himself, yes, there was that time in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, Father, please, if there is any other way, take this cup from me. But if there is not, then your will be done. That's how we should live our lives. But, okay, Father, whatever it is, I will do that, whichever, whatever you want from me, Father. If you want me to do this, then I'm, I'm all in. If there's any other way, then... Okay, so yeah, it's it, and it's it, you know what, Rick, it's hard. Um, when we started tithing, I actually I couldn't I, I didn't start at a tenth when we first started. I started at two percent, and I started working my way up. I, I, sh I, my wife was well ahead of me, but I was still afraid of, of, you know, the money and everything. Right. And just, just starting out. And so I started at 2%. Well, okay. It was like, wow, I didn't even notice that that that's gone. I mean, look at, you know, we're at the end of the month and we still have money. Okay. Let's go to 3%. And it became a game for me. It was one of those things where it's like, okay, let's see how far I can go. And to see how much God will bless us. And I can't tell you right now, truthfully, I can't tell you how much we're, we're doing in our tithing. Because I have people, I have, I have a couple of, I have a couple of uh, groups that I support. I have tithing going out to uh, different people. Um, she has tithing going out through the, uh, we, we agreed on a certain amount to go back to the, um, the college that she's going to, cause it's a Christian college and they have, um, 
what do you call it? Uh, uh, not memberships, um, scholarships that they give because there's some people who can't pay, who don't have the money to be able to, to, to pay, you know, for their full scholarship. So we donate to that and we, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, is that I found is that every single time I turn around, it's like God is blessing me. He's like, oh, oh, look, here's a little bit more, you know? And there are times when it's like, oh, wait a minute. Ooh, what happened? We, we took a hit. It's, it's, you know, we're all lower than what we were. And it was once I realized what happened, I, I, can, I get a pretty good sense of why it happened. Okay. You know, a little bit out of line with what God wants. We were getting a little bit, you know, too far out on the edge. Get back in line and everything falls back into place again. So talk to her about picking a number. Okay. It doesn't have to, don't, you don't have to start at 10% because you have to understand the mamas of the family, the mama bears take care of the den. They take care of the house. Their thing is, is, don't mess with my house, okay? You can go out and muck up my husband's garage all you want. Don't you touch him. Don't you touch my children. And don't you even think about touching our food. And we'll be fine, okay? Everything's cool. You start messing with the house. You start messing with the money. You start doing stuff like that. And mama gets mad, okay? You know that she's mad. When you know for a fact that you've put all the, the cast iron pots and pans away and you're in the garage and you hear one of them come down on top of the stove and you walk in and what's wrong? Nothing. And you get that look and you're like, I'm going to go back out in the garage before I'm wearing that frying pan as a hat and we can talk about this later maybe right exactly pamela without god i'd be lost without god it was it was i can't imagine what my life would be well i can but it scares me because i don't i i don't even want to imagine where i would be okay all right so the last verse we've got is in galatians 5 13, oh wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh, I beg your pardon, it's John 12, 26, I looked at the wrong one, okay, so this is Jesus speaking again, this is under the heading, the Messiah teaches, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, in heaven, will honor. Uh, correction. If anyone serves me, Jesus, him, my father, God, will honor. If anyone serves Jesus, if I serve Jesus, let me follow Jesus. And where Jesus is, there Dana, his servant, will be also. If anyone serves Jesus, him, God, my Father, will honor. If I serve Jesus, if I follow Jesus, if I walk that road with Jesus and I serve him because where he is, that's where the servant will be, right? Okay. The Father will honor me. I don't know how. I mean, you guys know pretty much about me. I, I don't know, you know, there's, I don't know why he would honor me, but it says that he will honor me. If I follow Jesus, if I am there with him, I am that servant. Okay. So we hit that one right on the nose, guys.
I apologize. Two hours, man. That's, that's a long time. We're on week 21. We got three weeks left, folks, and we're done with this study. I've already got the book for the next one. Uh, I got it in the house. So, anyways. Um, yeah. We need to serve Jesus. We need to serve God in a deeper way. We need to know who he is, what he wants. Uh, I know I don't have to give a tip just as long as I give it wholeheartedly knowing God is in control. Exactly, Ricky. And and there are going to come times, my brother, when, when it ain't going to be, you're going to give, right? But it's going to hurt. And then you're going to give, and this is where Satan's going to get in on this. Okay, so be really careful. Stay in prayer. Pray about it. When you give, you pray about it. You pray over the tithe. You pray over the giving. And then you let it go. Just let it go. You don't think about it anymore. Because there will come times like it did with us. When we tithed. And we were moving up. We were 7. We were 8% we were given. Okay? And this is when I was working for the phone company. I was making some serious, serious money. And 10% was a lot. So 7% was a good amount. And there were times when, as we got through the month, all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute. We're running out of, man, if we didn't give that much then, I would have had that, I, I would have had it now. What I've done is taken my eyes off of Jesus. I gave the money to him. It was his anyways. I just gave it back to God. I gave it to the church. Here, you do with it as God tells you to do with this money. That's where my heart has to be. It's got to stay on that plane. Because if I start to get angry about, oh, I shouldn't have given that much. I should have only given this much. And then I would have been okay till the end of the month. No, Dana. You need to let go of some other things. What he was doing was showing me in my life the things that I was paying. Memberships here and this there and that there and, and stuff like that. I was doing all of that, but I didn't need to. He was saying, you know, if you cut this out and you cut that out and you cut this out and you stop doing that and you stop that subscription and you start playing those stupid games, you have about $300 extra a month. That's what he was trying to show me. My heart was in the right place where I was tithing. But then I would get angry during the month because I run out of money. Well, I wasn't running out of money. I had more money than I needed. Remember I told you I can tell you where your heart is by your bank book, by your schedule, and walking through your house? All they have to do is look at my bank statement, and they could tell where my heart is. It it's, you know, I was doing more other places than I was giving to God. And it was stupid stuff. And it took me a while to get that drilled into my skull but once i did it locked it, it, it just dropped into place and then all of a sudden the next thing i know a couple months later we're we're doing 10 percent, and we're ending up with extra money at the end of the month i was like how that happen it's because god showed me that your heart isn't exactly where you think it is right now. I need you to correct yourself. Okay? So, as you work your way through it, you will be able to um, realize on your money 
that you're going to see things change. Open your hand. Let God do with your money what he will do. It's his money anyways. The blessings come from him. The blessings go back to him. Our tithes, and, and understand that if you tithe to a church or if you tithe to an organization or a foundation or whatever, when you hand that check, that, that money order, that cash over to them, it's yours until you hand it to them. When it's mine, it belongs to God. This is God's money. When I give it to them, it's still God's money. If they do right by it, then he will bless them for that. If they do wrong with it, he will take them to task. I don't have to worry about it. I have the option to move that money somewhere else if I wish, to another charity, to another foundation, to another organization. As long as God leads me to do that, as long as I do my due diligence on who that money, who's going to get that money, okay, I pass that money on to them. I have brought honor to God by doing that. Okay? I have given it to them as I am instructed. This is God's money that I am giving to you. It is no longer mine. I have no, no ties to it. Do with it as you will, as God directs you. If they do something evil with it, that's on them. That's not on me. That's not on you. People need to understand that part of it. Okay? And, and folks, tithing only means, it, it means tenth, one-tenth. If you read in the Bible that, that they were supposed to bring, you know, Cain and Abel, they were supposed to bring the first of their first, the first fruits, the first tenth, okay, to they're supposed to bring that and, and give it you know, to God. It, I don't want to say it doesn't matter where, you, where that goes. But God will lead you to places that need that money. He will show you places. Maybe, maybe you have an unwed mother's thing that you're at, you know where they're they're having their babies but they they don't the father is out of the picture or and their parents won't take them in or whatever the situation you know there's places where they have maybe that is what you want to do help support them right maybe um your tithing is for a charity for for kids i've got a buddy who actually supports a whole town i guess he calls it as a in, in Africa, there's a whole, it's a group, whatever it is, right? He supports the whole thing. He doesn't, he's not doing one kid. He's not doing one family. He's doing the whole dadgum place, the, the whole town. He goes down there like once, once a year or once every other year and goes down and works with them, goes down there and just plays ball with the kids and all kinds of stuff and takes down all kinds of stuff. We have to walk where God leads. If it's getting hard on your feet, if your back's starting to hurt, reevaluate where you are. Because maybe you're carrying more load than you need to because you're not where God wants you. Your feet are hurting because you're not on the right path. You need to be on another path where God wants you. So... With all that being said, folks, let me get you guys prayed up for the day. I appreciate you all being here. Um, don't forget, tomorrow is Wednesday. It's hump day. And uh, we'll get back at it again. We'll be here at 7 o'clock. Hopefully this one went off without a hitch. Um, yeah. So, anyways. 
let me get you guys prayed up for the day, get you on about your business. Father God, I just thank you so very, very much for this time. I thank you, Father God, for your grace and love. I give you all the glory, Father God. I give you all the honor. Everything, Father God, that I have is yours, all that I am. I pray, Father God, that you would use this message. You would use these words that have been spoken, whether it's recorded or live that they're listening, Father God, for your will. Because that's what matters most, Father God, is your will above all else. We can pray for many healings. We can pray for many things. But at the end of it all, Father God, it is your will above and beyond, first and foremost, that we need to pray for. I ask you, Father God, to continue to heal my family here, continue to heal Pam, and heal, uh, heal my buddy's mom from the, the cancer, Father God, and, and those here who have those unspoken prayers, whether it's inside of the family or it's indirect family or maybe it's just friends, work, uh, got a, another family member who just lost his job today. Um, I learned about it in the other Bible study that uh, his wife came on and said, you know, pray for him because it's, he lost his job. In this time, Father God, that is just, that is, it used to be that wasn't a big deal. You could have another job before the end of the week. Now, Father God, it's, uh, it's hard. So I ask you, Father God, to please bless them. From your abundance, Father God, that you would sustain them until they are back on their feet again. For those here who need help, Father God, that you would uh, see that they would be taken care of, uh, whether it's financially or through food. Um, whatever it is, Father God, I pray that you would bless them, give them grace, help them, Father God, to know that you are the one that's in charge. I praise you and I thank you, Father God. I give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for us, for giving us the opportunity to spend eternity with you and with God in heaven. I pray all these things in the name of your precious and holy son, Jesus. Amen. All right. You as well, Trip. You as well, my brother. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you guys all for being here. I lost mine on Wednesday. I got a bunch of apps I'm going to end in now. Amen. Thank you. Don't, Mike, don't give up. Don't give up. Okay. Um, it was it, one of the things I learned when I lost, I lost my job one time. I got fired, actually. Um, they came back and said they were sorry, but it was too late. It was, you know, it was done. Um, they'd screwed up and, and uh, they fired me. But keep pushing at that, at that wheel of, of, of employment because there is a job out there that God has for you. Okay. He will secure it. He will bring you to it when the time is ripe. At the perfect time, um, just like with a baby, it's it's it, the baby doesn't is not born until the exact moment that he wills it. So you stay with it, and and only the one thing I can tell you that I learned about when I was looking for jobs was do your due diligence on the company because understand, yes, you're going to work for them, but you want to know more about them than they do about you. Study their finances. Study what they do. Study where they send their stuff. Study uh, how do they, you know, what kind of, do they have any um, uh, complaints, okay, with the employment company, whatever, against them. There you go, Mike. There you go. Rock and roll, brother. Go with God because he goes with you, man. You got this.
Do you have a gamer dent? Uh, no, I don't have any dents. I had all my dents pulled out. <laughs> I actually, I don't know what you're saying. Um, well, there you go, Mike. Praise God. There you go, man. Cool. We'll keep you in prayer. What, uh, what time zone are you in, Mike? Yeah, that's right. Thank you, man. You know, you know. Y'all's patient love, hope, and bless the day. Uh, you know, Trip, you're welcome, brother. Um, yeah, a gamer dent is from playing too much video game. <laughs> yeah, I did for quite a while. Um, I, uh, I used to play, I, I played Dungeons and Dragons for a long time, or not Dungeons, it's uh, uh, EverQuest for quite a long time. And I got to the point where I would run, I was running three characters, three computers at one time. Um, I knew that I was getting a little bit overboard when um, I was up till about 1.30 in the morning playing and I was drinking uh, Pepsi. And I went to bed and I got up the next morning and I felt like I was drunk. And um, what ended up happening was, is I had um, CO2 poisoning. I had CO2 bubbles running through my system. Is why I, why I was all dizzy and drunk and everything, like I was drunk. Um, so yeah, it, it was one of those things where I finally decided, you know what? No, nope, we're done. I'm done. That's it. Finished. And uh, I haven't done any of that since then um i just i don't know yeah I, I used to play a lot but i'm i don't do that anymore it's it gets too addicting <laughs> so all right guys um i pray that the lord would bless you and keep you mike i'm gonna pray a second blessing upon you my brother that this goes well that uh, they do right by you, um, that the Lord goes before you and prepares, and uh, God bless you, Mike, and uh, that the Lord go before you, Mike, and all that you do today that would be a blessing for you. And uh, we'll be here tomorrow morning. You can pop in and say hi and, and let us know how it worked and how it went. So um, go with God because I know that he goes with you, my brother. For the rest of you guys, have a blessed day. I pray the Lord's blessing and grace over you, that his light would shine upon you and upon your path, that all that you do this day, that God would look down upon it with, with joy and that uh, his grace would be abundant with you. To all of my brothers and sisters, the veterans, active duty, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, National Guard, Coast Guard, Space Force, Blue Star families, Gold Star families, please don't ever give up with all of the police the sheriffs, fire, emergency response teams, health, life flight, search and rescue, my families, all of you, please, just one more day. Don't stop. Don't give in. Don't give up. Refuse to give up. See one more sunrise because i promise you when that sunrise comes so comes another blessing from god you will find a way through it may be hard it may be the hardest thing that you do in your life yes go ahead oh you too my brother go with god rain um See the sunrise, please. KFG. 
I love you guys very much. Folks, take care. We'll be back here again tomorrow morning at uh, 7 o'clock Pacific time. Um, if you're in another country, if you run off of GMT, I'm at a minus 8 GMT. So um, you can figure that out from there. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thanks for being here. One more day. Absolutely, Rain, just one more day. Don't, don't give up. KFG. Take care, Rain. Have a good day, my brother. Bye-bye, guys.